Developing this morning, sources are telling CNN that U.S. officials are actively updating emergency evacuation plans for the American embassy in Kabul. There are concerns about the potential for escalating violence in the region, while U.S. troops near complete withdrawal from the country. Anna Korn has the late from Bagram Air Base, which is now controlled by the Afghan military after U.S. troops pulled out last week. John and Brianna, we are here at Bagram Air Base. This is the first time we've been given access to this facility since U.S. and NATO forces departed on Friday. And what is wrapping up behind me is a high-level meeting of the National Security Council, a delegation sent by Ashraf Ghani to assess what the Americans actually left here at Bagram Air Base and how the Afghans can use it moving forward. Uh, we were taken to the, the airfield, the runway, which is two miles long. This was the hive of activity at the height of this war where fighter jets, cargo planes and surveillance aircraft would depart and, and land constantly. It is now absolutely deserted. Uh, there are air hangars in the background that have been locked. The Afghans still don't have access to them. And then around here, you can see it's like a, a car yard. There are hundreds of cars, SUVs, pickup trucks that have been left by the Americans for the Afghans. It comes at a time where the, the security situation in this country is deteriorating rapidly. We know that the Taliban are have, have taken more than 150 districts just in the past two months. Uh, the vice president of Afghanistan said that there are tens of thousands of people fleeing the countryside because of the fighting coming to the cities. And that was backed up by the United Nations, which said more than 56,000 people have had to flee four provinces in the northeast, which is where fighting is extremely uh, aggressive. John and Brianna, back to you. Anna Gordon from Afghanistan, thank you very much. And new this morning, President Biden's withdrawal from the nearly 20-year war in Afghanistan may be almost complete, but how is he going to stop it from once again becoming a safe haven for terrorists? Sources tell CNN that his administration still hasn't finalized its policy for pursuing terrorists in the country once U.S. troops are gone. Let's bring in CNN's Katie Bo Williams uh, to talk about this. I will say it seems like something that probably should have been figured out before a draw. Right. So for months now, the Biden administration has been reviewing the rules, the standards that the CIA and the DOD have to operate under in order to use lethal force in Afghanistan once U.S. troops have departed. Now, what do I mean by lethal force? I'm talking about drone strikes. I'm talking about even potentially commando raids. And part of this review has been looking at whether or not to kind of raise the bar, raise, uh, tighten up the rules that the CIA and DOD have to operate under once U.S. troops have, have left and the United States is no longer officially at war in Afghanistan. As you suggest, this kind of reviewing, this kind of policymaking process is to be expected as the United States weighs, blah, 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 as it you know, drops down in this war and, like, um, and moves into a new footing. Um, but uh, it is it is notable that this hasn't happened yet, even as the even as the withdrawal is accelerating. We've seen troops leaving Bagram. We've seen uh, troop numbers dropping to their no lowest number yet. Um, what that means in the short term, status quo continues. DOD and CIA continue to operate under essentially the same rules that they've been operating under. But it does leave them in in a little bit of a position of of limbo as they sort of wait to to find out what the rules that they're going to be playing by in the long term are in the long run once, again, once U.S. troops are, are gone and Biden is saying this thing is over. Now, why does this sort of weedy rule setting policy process matter in Afghanistan? It really highlights the delicate balancing act that Biden is, is trying to strike here um, in between ending a war with an adversary that is still fighting and yet not losing critical counterterrorism capabilities in a country where the United States is still worried about al-Qaeda, still worried about ISIS. And so you're pursuing all of these questions. Congress is as well. How is Congress reacting to what seems to be kind of a lack of answers? Yeah, I mean, I think you're seeing some growing frustration on the Hill. For, for months, lawmakers from both parties have really been pushing the Biden administration on the nitty gritty of like, OK, what is your plan to continue to pursue terrorists here? after you have sort of lost visibility into the country. Because, you know, again, remember, when you pull out conventional troops from Afghanistan, you really you lose the backbone 
that America's intelligence network in, in Afghanistan has been built on for the last 20 years. So they've lost a, a tremendous amount of, of visibility, of capability to sort of see and then carry out lethal strikes there. And so I think you will continue to see Congress pushing for specifics here. All right, we will be watching. Thank you so much, Katie Bow. Appreciate it.